Well, Razorback fans, it was a really good weekend for a lot of different reasons, and we're going to try to talk about them, but especially Arkansas over under five wins for the football season. What are we doing? You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of the John Neighbors Show, which you can catch every weekday afternoon from 4 to 6 on Natty State Sports and NattyStateSports.com. These days, every new potential hire feels like a high-stake wagers for your small business. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash College. Terms and conditions to apply. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend as they're having a little noon action. It'll be back in schedule for the Lockdown Razor X podcast starting tomorrow morning. But uh, there were some things that went down. And once I feel like every single time on this podcast, we start to get into talking about like all three of the major sports and, and different things. But uh, we'll get to all of it. And especially the the nice series victory over Mississippi State that the Razorback baseball team had, and even an update on John Calipari and uh, some of the players that were visiting over the weekend. But I wanted to start with the football side of things too, because listen, football is still king. Football is still every, is what everybody wants to talk about. And I was uh, looking at some of the 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 early lines, you know, that they always put out. And I know, of course, FanDuel is one of those that always has uh, lines and such to just give you a feel or give you a vibe of what to expect out of uh, the, whether it's the games or the seasons. <clears throat> and with Razorback football, I always am intrigued about the over under amount of wins that Arkansas goes through. And I tried to look back into the Sam Pittman era and get an idea of what preseason wise, it always looked like for Arkansas. And folks, there hasn't really been many times that Arkansas has, left the five, five-and-a-half game window. Uh, to my knowledge, the season after 2021, so going into 2022, that year, Arkansas, I believe the over-under was set at seven-and-a-half. At least I saw one outlet do that. Could have dropped to six-and-a-half. But besides that, it's pretty much been five-and-a-half the entire time under Sam Pittman. Now, it's, you know, it's, pretty, it's average, you know, in case... Uh, anybody has any questions on it, it may even be below average. But the latest that I saw is at five. So you don't even get the half game, just straight up five wins. And that's always a good indicator of kind of where your program's at heading into the season. You know, we can hear about SEC media days. We can talk about SEC media days and all of that. But to me, it's about Vegas. What does Vegas say? Vegas usually has an indicator. They usually have a good idea of it. Not to say that they're always right, but... I think that it being set at five wins is about right. It's about right. And so going into the year, knowing the schedule and knowing what the roster and the team and everybody looks like, I get asked on occasion what I think is right or what I think, what I'm going to take. If, if it's set at five, what am I taking? Am I taking the over or am I taking the under? Well, let me, uh, let me say this, folks. If it was at five or even five and a half, I'm betting the over because if you've listened to this podcast and you've heard me talk about it to maybe some of you individually, it is a pretty good vibe that I have going into the year that it is going to be an improved team from last season. And everybody just brings up, oh, well, you know, you, it's, it's look at the schedule though. It's like, yeah, well, every single year, it seems like Arkansas has the toughest schedule in the country or at least one of them in the SEC. So what's any different from this season? And I know that the schedule gets brought up a lot, and it is difficult. Don't, don't get me wrong. But I also don't see it as difficult as maybe others do. For instance, I know Texas is going to be a really good team. I think Ole Miss is going to be a really good team. I think LSU is going to be a pretty solid team. Because those are the teams that are on the schedule that Arkansas has that is sitting there at 11 win totals. Nine win totals. I think uh, even Missouri's at eight and a half, which, you know, they have a pretty, pretty easy schedule, comparatively speaking. But those teams, I think, are going to be really good. And those teams, I feel like Arkansas is going to struggle to beat. 
Not saying that it can't happen because we've seen Arkansas beat Ole Miss at home pretty handedly each time they've played Lane Kiffin. We've seen them be really close with LSU. I mean, what was it, the past three games, four games that these two teams have faced off against each other? It's been a three-point game. So would I be surprised if that happened? No, I wouldn't be. But then you look at the rest of the schedule, and there's just such an uncertainty with everything. You know, Texas A&M, they got a new coach in Mike Elko. Could be good. Might be good. We have no idea. Jeff Levy of Mississippi State could be good. But it's hard to really feel confident in what they got going on. And everyone's, you know, and here's the thing about Auburn and Hugh Freeze. I am not saying that they won't be good. But I feel like so many people fall in love with the Hugh Freeze-Auburn angle because they were not a good football team last year. You know, they smoked Arkansas, but we all know Arkansas wasn't either. But they were not a great football team last year. And I don't know, I just still have my doubts. So who knows what they're going to really look like. And Tennessee, I know Tennessee can score. Tennessee's done a really good job under Josh Heupel. But, what is it, they had eight wins last year? Uh, it just depends on what Arkansas is looking like at the time. But my point is, is that you see all these games, and other than really just three teams, I don't see it just like a guaranteed loss for Arkansas. Or, let me rephrase it. I don't see a guaranteed blowout, zero chance type of game. I'm not saying Arkansas will win all those games that, they, that I listed, but it just doesn't give that vibe. So... With that, and then, of course, the Oklahoma State game on the road in week two, I've been saying it for a long time, that's the kicker. That's the key game. You win that game, it's going to be a great year. You lose that game, it's going to be tough. Plain and simple. So we'll, have, we'll see what happens in Stillwater, just like we all wanted it. We all wanted all of our seasons to come down to a, a week two matchup in a really hot Stillwater, Oklahoma. Great. But that's about the schedule. That's about everybody else. But think about Arkansas. Let's talk about Arkansas. And what they have. Because, again, newness on the offense across the entire board. Defense, returning a lot of key players. But, yeah, because if you want to put it simplistic. Defense, you got a D-line that could be pretty solid, but has one really great player that we know returning. And the secondary is going to be really solid with quite a few key players returning. Obviously losing Snacks Johnson, but I think with Slaughter coming in from Tennessee and replacing him, I think it's going to be fine there. And it comes down to the linebacker. So it's literally solid defensive line, solid secondary, linebacker, who knows. And then with the Razorback offense, I think you got a great running back room. I think you got a really talented quarterback room. I think you got a great tight end room. I think you got a much improved offensive room, much improved offensive line move room. And you have a wide receiver core that's all returning some of their key pieces from last season. So knowing all of that, the question becomes is like, why? So, why would you? And you feel like you've upgraded a coaching, right? You got Bobby Petrino, right? You kept everybody on from the defensive side, right? You, you, you upgraded an offensive line, right? Like, if you truly believe all that, like I just said, and which I do, I do from watching him in Springs and everything, why wouldn't you think that this team will be improved and be better than four and eight? And we're talking about two more wins, getting to six wins. I mean, the only position group that you can really say that Arkansas has gotten worse at or downgraded at at this moment in time is linebacker and maybe, maybe D line. But there is one thing though, on the other side, kicker, you don't have cam little, you don't have cam little, you got Vito Calvaruso, uh, who <laughs> returned back to Arkansas and we don't really know how that's going to be. And that's an important fact. That's an important part of it. Very important part of it. Arkansas has been very blessed in having some really good kickers. I mean, you had from Connor Limpert all the way into Cam Little, and it's pretty good. But that might be something that might not be as good. But still, overall, I feel like Arkansas is an improved team from last year. I think their schedule is honestly a little bit more favorable. Honestly. But they just got to go out and get it done. So, yeah. Over under five. Give me the over. Barely. I'm not spiking the ball and saying it's going to be great, but barely over 500, yes. That's what I'll go with the Razorbacks. All right, we'll talk a little baseball, man. What a series that was, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. But, folks, when you're hiring someone for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for that role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you find professionals that you can't find anywhere else, 
even when those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So you're not looking, so if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're not looking at the right place. Like that's the place to be. Well, on LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professionals only on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and may not have the time or the resources to make a hire. And that's why 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring because they make it so much easier on you. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, Razorback baseball, what a weekend. What a weekend for the final regular season uh, series in the SEC play at home. Just uh, incredible. And the weather was perfect, too. That's, that's the thing I appreciated the most. Great crowds. It was graduation. It was Mother's Day weekend. Had so many things going on. And I was, uh, I was able to attend the games and obviously, you know, we'll talk about some of the, the stuff that went into it. But I'll admit, I was talking with some people. Game one, Arkansas took care of business and won. They needed a, a comeback in game one. But you had Hagen Smith take care of business, strike out double-digit guys, just another day at the office. And then Arkansas's offense came up big late in the game. But there were a lot of walks issued. Even by Hagen Smith, something that Arkansas has not done a whole lot of, a lot of walks issued. I remember seeing that and being like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I like that or not. But hey, you know, one game, we'll see. But then game two, Arkansas got beat pretty good. And Brady Tiger struggled in the beginning. Uh, but once again, issued a lot of walks. And he wasn't just the only one. The bull, some of the guys in the bullpen came in, issued a lot of walks. And it's just like, man. <laughs> Like, I mean, that's, that's un, so un, uncommon for what Arkansas baseball has been able to do. It was weird seeing it. I didn't like it. And Arkansas was losing in that game. And then in game three, the rubber match, so important. But Mason Molina comes in and as a starter, walks batters, gets shelled a bit. And that was just like, oh, no. Oh, no. That was That was bad. And I'm not saying that, that that was the only reason why Arkansas was struggling was because of the starting pitching because, you know, the offense needed to do some things, especially in with runners in scoring position. But it was it was scary. And I was really concerned because I'm like, man, the, the vibe, I didn't like the vibe of the team at the time. I felt like, man, maybe they're fatigued. Maybe they're getting tired of each other because that happens in sports and it happens at this point in time of the year. And I was like looking at myself at Justify. I was like, well, you know, hey, LSU lost every series of their – final uh, weekend or last thir- lost their last three series of last year heading into the conference tournament. So hey, if Arkansas struggles, they lose, man, I really want to win this one because you got A&M, which I know have that. they haven't been perfect, but you know, you want to solidify yourself as that national seed and beating Mississippi state in a series was able to do it. Well, then the bats woke up and then Arkansas woke up and the pitching settled in. I thought Gage Wood did a solid job and Arkansas was able to come from behind and what was their largest come back in SEC history where they're down 6 nothing, and win 9-6. to six. Just a, tr- a tremendous, gritty performance. Hudson White was incredible. He went 5-12 for 12 with two home runs, six RBIs on the weekend. Uh, and again, Gage Wood I thought was great too. I mean, four innings pitch, four strikeouts, only two earned runs, t- had two saves in it. But it's, it's funny how baseball can be like that, and I think it was great. Like, that's the type of win – that you need if you're Arkansas and you're Dave Van Horn and this team to just any type of fatigue you had, any type of issues you had, any type of frustrations you had, you still found a way to win. Like it's grittiness. You, you did stuff that you were so uncommon. Like, I mean, not even just the starting pitching and so many walks, but you know, in the infield, there was a lot of random things that happened. Balls going off clubs and, uh, you know, leading to extra bases and things like that. It was just so weird. 
and not at, and not in character, but you still found a way to win. And you came from behind, and, and it's just, that's a gritty team. That's a tough team. And Dave Van Horn, I know, was fired up after the game because I was telling you, yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. I was sitting there uh, behind home plate on Sunday, too. I was just like, man, those Mississippi State players in that dugout, they talk a lot. And I'll never understand, like, again, I'm not trying to turn this into that, but it's just like, man, like, if you talk that much, you better win. You better win. But Arkansas won. They got the series. And I believe in the uh, latest poll for uh, D1 baseball, they have Arkansas at number three. So I believe that Arkansas, after the series victory over Mississippi State, they have officially solidified themselves as a national seed. Uh, obviously, you want to take care of business against stay m this weekend in College Station because uh, they're a and number five. So you're talking about a top five matchup between Arkansas and AM this weekend. Be nice to win the series, but you know you you just you, you got to get to that point where you get that national seed, and now you got it, or at least you feel good about it. So you can take that pressure off a little bit. So Arkansas gets to host, which again they went off phenomenal. They've been at home. Some people feel like that they need to go on the road for their World Series, or for their uh, run to the World Series, because that seems like they're more successful. But Arkansas has done it too. 2018, 2019, went to the World Series. Uh, 20, I guess, was it 2004? Yeah, 2004, went to the World Series. Is 09 all at home too? No, I think one of them is at Florida State, maybe. Anyways, point is, Arkansas does really good when it comes to uh, at home just as well. They do it just as good at home as they do on the road. That's the whole point of it. All right, folks, we'll get into uh, some uh, some baseball talk or basketball talk because I know some people are wanting to know what's going on with the latest of the John Cal Perry saga. Before we do, though, folks, I got to tell it's a winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. It's FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, Razorbacks are wondering about John Calipari and what it's looking like for the next big pop that's going to be happening. Over the weekend, of course, DJ Wagner was on a visit officially. Also had, uh, I believe, Acuff was the 2025 class, true freshman, that uh, is a five-star, one of the best players. He was on a visit, at least at the time of the recording of this podcast. Nothing has happened just yet, uh, but we'll wait and see on that and, of course, talk about it once it does. But uh, I started thinking about it where... You, you look at how coaches handle their recruiting and uh, when you can start leaning towards or having a really good feeling about getting one of these players or some of these players to commit. Um, one of the things that I always thought was, you know, like under Muss, it was more about, because there were so many players that got mentioned and got named. To me, his was always more about, um, you know, seeing the social media aspect, how many guys are following them or you know, how, how much is getting mentioned or about, you know, somebody on staff. That was usually a good indicator of where you could point to and be like, okay, you feel really good about this guy. I'm not saying it was always 100%, but you felt really good about it. With Cal Perry, it's really been so far, at least for Arkansas, about getting them on campus for visits. He's got a pretty high batting average when it comes to getting guys on campus and then getting them to commit. Uh, it's not been everybody. Uh, I guess, Her uh, was it Garrison? Brandon Harrison? Harrison Garrison? The big guy that went to Oklahoma State or from Oklahoma State, uh, you know, I, th I think that he was on an official visit that didn't transpire. I know there's been uh, maybe another one, but pretty, pretty solid, pretty solid. It was a, uh, it's a pretty cool thing to see how you when you have visits like that to have a pretty high percentage of them committing. And so I feel pretty good about it. I'm going to be honest. I feel good about Wagner and good about Kayshawn Pryor. Wagner, of course, being the transfer out of Kentucky. The prior kid, I'm pretty pretty pumped about. He averaged 13 points, eight rebounds, two assists a game, shot 35% from three, and he's 6'10", 210 from South Florida. Like, he was, uh, he, he would be cool. He would be cool to get on, 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 on the snap. And just, 
Like another thing too that Cal Perry said was talking about, oh, he just wants eight players. And people were like, oh man, he's only going to have eight scholarship players or anything. <laughs> Here's the thing. Like if you're a coach, if you're Cal, like you're only going to have that many players in rotation anyways. So why not go in on all those guys? Get all your NIL funding that you can and get those eight players and then just, I don't, I'm not saying just get walk-ons after that, but maybe, <laughs> maybe just like, hey, I don't know, after that we'll just fill in the blanks. Because if that's going to mean getting the, the best players of that top eight, do that. And then the rest of it just let slide. I think it's a, it's a recipe that could really work. So I'm hoping it works. We'll see. But either way, hoping some pops here today or tomorrow. And when it does, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to talk about it. But appreciate everybody listening in to Locked On Razorbacks Rex podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbors Show for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. Keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.